Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, in open source, in basically whatever we find interesting. Warning, we try to have a good time. There may be laughter if that's not your thing. There's plenty of other <laughs> other shows to go watch. I'm Vin. That laughter was one Jill Bryan. Hello, Jill Bryan. Hello, Hi. Vin. How Hi. are you doing? <laughs> and everyone watching this live on Twitch. We do this on Twitch. Oh, man. Uh, I finally got our video up on Spotify. Woohoo! Cool. I go need need to go and watch it still. <laughs> you got to do it. You got. I had to fight. You. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's a beta. Uh, so like it, the first time, <laughs> it, it's it. Spotify second breakfast. That first upload never goes right. Upload the exact same thing again. I was like, okay. Nice. But it, but it is. Um, that's a couple of things I want to mention though, because uh, I want somebody to test it. I put out this. If you do use Spotify on the app, or I think even on the webpage, there's a, a, we have video now and we're participating in that. There's an option to leave a voice message. I want somebody to test it just because I want to see what it looks like and see what it sounds like and see if we can tie it into yeah. the show and kind of make it a thing. That Mostly cool. morbid curiosity. So for this week and next week, pretty much anything you send that's going to fit within this show's particular PG-13 rating category, we'll play it. I'll give you my word on that. But mm. a couple other things. We had a long pre-show, Joe. Yeah, we did because we were testing something. I was waiting on something <laughs> to fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you ever heard of a band called the, um, or a group, I should say, called the Aphex Twins? Oh, yeah. Aphex Twin is one of my favorite, actually. I, have, I love an industrial synth. Right? Yeah. I have a piece of <laughs> hardware from Aphex, which is the company they based their band name on. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's where uh, yeah, they got I the idea. About that. Yeah. yeah, that's where the Aphex twins got the idea of the Aphex is uh, using an Aphex compeller, which I picked up. I mm -hmm. talked about. I even did a video about it way way back, maybe a year ago. Just talking about it. I've had it sitting in the rack. I got it for a pittance. Like I want to use this thing because it's really cool. They're still in use today. It does. It's a hyper transparent leveling compressor limiter maximizer, and it's an analog computer, which is why I'm fascinated about it. I'm like, how do you work? And we're using it right now. I got it tied into the live stream chain. And this ultimately, it's not just curiosity. A lot of it was curiosity and like, how do I make this work? This should be printing. If everything goes swimmingly on this episode, I'm all the audio for this episode will be 100% ready to go. As soon as I import it, it is there. I will not have to do any adjustments whatsoever to it. Nice. Yeah. Which... Makes it so much faster for production. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually the audio is like 98, 99% there. I might have to tweak a couple of things with normalization, uh, which don't use normalization kits. That's not what I'm trying to say because I know I'm like, yes, yeah, so I just flatten everything. <laughs> like, oh, that, <laughs> that, that drives me up the wall when I listen to a podcast. I'm like, I know how to level everything out. We just use a compressor and put a limiter on it and smash everything down. Uh, don't do that, kids. Um, yeah, I'm playing around with it. That's working. Hopefully it won't die. And uh, what else? Okay, we did the Spotify video. NetJack mm -hmm. video. My Duke Nukem mm -hmm. Forever videos is in 100% IKEA mode. I have all the parts. I've recorded all the things. I had to go back and re-record the things that I forgot to record. I did that last night when we were playing Track Mania. I was like, I'm in here. Let's just go ahead and do it. Mm. And, uh, you know, fate even tried to get in my way, Jill. It did. Oh, boy. Because it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, you're trying to do... How about... A helicopter flying over the house. I'm like, really? Oh, joy. Really? Yeah, a real Not loud that. one, probably, oh, too. Low to the ground, so you that really hear it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> I was trying to psych fade out. It's like, I got up, took a break, but I left everything on. Then I snuck back in and dropped my lines real quick. You <laughs> had a birthday, and yeah. I saw some pictures that uh, they didn't look, like, didn't look like a health-conscious birthday to me. Oh yeah, I had a had a wonderful uh, ice cream with cake on the bottom of it. A special uh, happy birthday cake ice cream from Disneyland, and that was awesome. So yeah, I had a had a great time at Disneyland with my my Steve husband, where I got to see the Main Street Electrical Parade. It's uh, fifty years old now, and I'm I'm actually older than it is. But I remembered as a baby seeing that parade. So it was so nice seeing that, it again. Stuff like that hits differently, doesn't it? Yeah. I realized I'm older than that parade. <laughs> yeah. 
And so, I had that. I was like, they announced the new doctor. And I'm like, well, it finally happened. There's a doctor that's younger than me. It's yeah. going to happen to us all at some point. I know. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, in in I was, 20s. In his yeah, 20s. I yeah. was down with the Capaldi. I'm like, yeah, Capaldi's old. <laughs> but um, no, that, that was neat. I, I saw the pictures that you dropped in Discord. What does Steve mm-hmm. do? Because th- I, I saw Steve, like, right. He's like, I don't fit in this ride. I can't do anything in this ride yeah there was some ride you were on that he can't couldn't get in oh yeah 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 the matterhorn <laughs> the, i don't know what matterhorn. a matterhorn word is steve drops these terms like you do sometimes yeah, it, like it, no it, one knows what you're talking about okay yeah it's a, a roller coaster built into a scale model of the matterhorn in switzerland it's it's amazing uh walt built it in the 50s okay uh, for disneyland it's unique just to disneyland it's an amazing immersive atmospheric ride and but it's a little rough because it's 1950s uh, roller coaster technology, and they recently updated the seats in the cars, and they're very uncomfortable for people who are tall. <laughs> so I don't have a problem with it, but it's it's they're still the seats are still a little rough, but to me they're more comfortable than they were previously. Okay. But for Stephen, it just fit him the wrong way. He had a hard time getting out of the. Um, out of the uh, bobsled. <laughs> so, oh, so did Steve get in it once and take a ride? And he was like, nope, not again. Yeah, never again. He was in pain. He was actually in pain in that ride because it just, it fit him incorrectly in his hips and everything, in his legs. It just, All right. Yeah. So that's the only ride at Disneyland he won't go on anymore. <laughs> I was curious about that because Steve posted, he was like, I can't get in the matter. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I, I was curious, <laughs> but I knew instead of looking it up, I could ask Joe. Yeah, and Jill would tell you, this <laughs> absolutely. Is what is. Pretty decent. <laughs> All right, you got a chance to play with Fedora thirty six. Oh, I sure did, and it's it's running actually very su- super smooth for me on, on one of my Ryzen computers with an NVIDIA GTX ten eighty Ti. Yes, I said it, NVIDIA GTX ten eighty Ti. So after six months of development, Red Hat's enterprise desktop distribution, the wonderful Fedora Linux. 36 36 is out and it includes uh, the updated GNOME 42 with full support for GTK4 apps and all the latest hardware support with Linux kernel 5.17 and yes wait for it Wayland for NVIDIA users finally so yeah Fedora Linux 36 includes the enablement of Wayland sessions by default in GDM or the GNOME Display Manager for users with the NVIDIA proprietary driver. Uh, th- this is this is wonderful. I've even started playing some games with <laughs> with NVIDIA under Wayland in Fedora 36. It's it's been a pretty surreal experience actually. <laughs> So it's it, this is an amazing release. There's some great updates to Podman as well. Uh, and it's it's a huge release and very stable, working very stable. All right. So, yeah. I'm and kind love- of interested in it. One good yeah. thing that I saw that I'm happy to see is um, they're shipping 517, mm-hmm. which very is good, nice. especially if you are doing any type of audio work with USB audio interfaces. There is a massive latency reduction in 416 and later, even without the real-time patch. A lot of that stuff just worked into the regular branch of the kernel. Good to see that XFC 416 and a bunch of inferior desktops. Yeah. Yeah. So all the spins also have been updated and their uh, desktop managers like the KDE Plasma version has been updated yeah. to Plasma 5.24 LTS XFCE 4.16. On the, the only desktop. That's X- the right F- desktop. Everyone. XFCD is CE spin LXQT 1.0. Yeah. That's that is actually a brilliant release of LXQT. Yeah. C- the Cinnamon Cinnamon Spin it has a version 5.2 of Cinnamon, and the Fedora Mate Spin is 1.26. That's so close enough impressive. to XFC. I'll let it pass on me. Um, yeah, I love love Mate. It's it's a great desktop. And by <laughs> that, I I will go ahead and say like Gnome Two did a really good job of getting very XFC, and a lot of people seem to really yeah. like Gnome Two enough to where Mate exists now. It's like remember yes. when everything worked? Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's good to see. Get out there and try it. I am in no way is Wayland in my future, but yeah, if it is an option, mm-hmm. try it out. I want to see what, uh, cause I know Jordan will eventually get into it yes, at some point. Will. Yeah. And, uh, Hopefully, it's going to be a nice, smooth experience. I know there's still some hiccups with Pipewire, and there's still some hiccups with Waylon, especially on NVIDIA. Team Green. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, here's something I want to find out. Maybe at home, you could write in and let me know. Is there a decent, like, quick, straightforward way to nope the Waylon? Oh, yeah. All you got to do is uh, uh, log out, and you can go uh, go back to the Xorg server. You just so got to it ships yeah. with the X in place and you're ready yeah. to go? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I'll allow it. Uh, here's something mm-hmm. I'd really like to allow, Jill. I want I want to live this dream from the yeah. Posi- yeah, Thunderbird Twitter, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, um, Artharon, for finding this for us. The developers of one of the best, actually, open source email clients in the world to me is Thunderbird. Thir- Thunderbird. And Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Say it right. Thunderbird. Because you wrote Thunderbird. <laughs> <laughs> that's because that's, that's its Christian name, Jill. Thunderbird. Yes. <laughs> like Foxfire. <laughs> Thunderbird. So Thunderbird has announced that an Android version of Thunderbird is coming. And we're supposed to be hearing more details in a few weeks. This was very exciting. Um, I, I'm really excited because, you know, I've actually been established on Gmail and K9 mail for Android. Uh, but this, this announcement really makes me think about changing, especially since I use Thunderbird on desktop daily, especially here for LGC, for my LGC mail and my Gmail. So that's, that's a thing. And this, this is going to be really great. We've been, me and Ven were talking about this earlier. We've been wanting this for a long time. We've wanted a Thunderbird mobile client. <laughs> We've wanted it. We've been waiting for it. I think probably for yeah. the last decade. I'm not alone. Just not alone. I'm like, yeah. Where, where's the mobile app? You know, we've had Firefox for a long time on Android. Yeah. And that's a bit of a mixed bag because, yes. you know, with an email client, I want something as clean, fast, like a decent alternative to Gmail. Gmail's kind of heavy. Gmail's kind of chonky. It is. It uh, is. Yeah. However, Firefox on Android's kind of heavy and it's kind of chonky, and which is unfortunate because I would much rather use Firefox on Android than yet another Chrome, you know, Google fied you know, information silo. But it's just not a good experience on my Galaxy S six and. Yeah. Gotta say, if it's not running decent on an S six, it's that's pretty decent <laughs> yeah. tablet, you know, yes. on Octa Core with four gigs of RAM. But I remain optimistic. Until I remain optimistic because I want it yes. to come out. I want to have my mind blown. I want, but here's the problem. Something I experienced because I no longer use Thunderbird on the desktop. I moved to Evolution. That's I right. Did. Yeah. I had my reasons. Mm-hmm. They were legitimate. They weren't, you know, like grr, I'm angry at anything. It was just production flow thing uh that was a pain moving all my stuff from one to the other and i'm moving from (laughs) gmail to something like hopefully there's a really because i have you know our own imap set up for linux teamcast and my other google accounts and places like that i hope if there's a nice slick like import for that then we're down then i'm happy that's what we need Yeah. yeah Then I'm going to try it. If I got to do it one at a time, I don't know if I'd ever try it. I'm just being honest. I don't see a lot of people, like maybe if you have one email account, but if you get 12, that, yeah, that's a lot of. A little harder. What's well, that? I know in the last version of Thunderbird, they actually did streamline the um, the importing of uh, email clients and, and made it a little simpler process. So maybe that'll be true for the uh, mobile client as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure that. They intend to do that, to have it easy and clean. But with that many accounts, I'm still not sure, Vin. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm hopeful. That's where I'm at. I promise you I will try it and uh, report back. And yeah, I want to see how it works on a tablet screen because I live that tablet life. Uh, anything like yeah. smaller than 10 inches is comical in my hands. So uh, <laughs> it, it just is. And, yes. I mean, it, it's adorable <laughs> watching me train you use like a six inch phone. It's yeah, yeah, that's finger. I can see. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, 
there is that. Now, that's good news. That is exciting. This is bad news. This is depressing, but it's still news. Uh, yeah. Keeping on that NVIDIA train. Oh, no. Mm. Not anyway. NVIDIA GeForce, all the 30 series LHR graphics cards have been unlocked. NiceHash has confirmed 100% crypto mining rate in the latest quick miner update. And that dun, sucks. Dun, dun. <laughs> that sucks. That does nothing but suck. It sucks in reverse. Um, yeah. We had a good run. I'll say kind of. You know, a lot of people are expect, uh, speculating that this came from the NVIDIA leak. Uh, what was it, like last month, month before? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could have been uh, conflicting reports. I read a couple of sites saying that uh, this LHR is still enabled like on the 3080 Ti or something like that. But I think it's just a fair to assume that the end is nigh. Nice. However, <laughs> you know, if you're unaware, maybe you don't know. NVIDIA did release a total, limited hash rate. So... NVIDIA released 12, possibly 13 LHR cards uh, to combat crypto. I say that jokingly because I've never seen one in stock and I've never seen one on a shelf, but I do know they, in fact, exist. But um, nobody told miners and scalpers because they just bought them anyway. It's like, well, just Mm. take them. It'll work out. And it was a token effort to begin with. Me, Jill, you, Mm -hmm. we're no longer NVIDIA's customers. Haven't been for a long time. You know, we're just like, yeah, if you get some, you get some, whatever. This, I had to wait yeah. 10 months to get a 3060. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't I'm think I'm waiting this... 3070s to come down to MSRP. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting know, patiently. Yeah. <laughs> like, I ended up paying, thir- I, I figure like, pff, even if you factor in like a very, very easy rate of inflation, I paid out $30 more than the original MSRP that's for good. my 3060. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's where I was at. That's what I said. I said, if I have, can ever get that close, I'll just instantly buy one. There it was, and I bought one. But I don't think you really need to be terribly concerned with this because of the you know, price of the cards. <laughs> yeah. The people who are buying these, they're going to buy the palette of whatever comes on. They've been buying LHR regular. You know, they're not mm-hmm. the ones you, I, I was talking to couple of people about this they show up at a place like a costco or sam's club or what do you might have locally a tesco superstore they go talk to managers and they say hey you know what this next mm-hmm. shipment comes in i'll just slide you like two thousand dollars if you let me buy all of that at retail yeah that's what you're up against yeah unfortunately <laughs> so i mean yeah this sucks but I don't think it's going to affect anything. I mean, prices are probably still going to equalize yeah. to some extent because they have to. All the people that were going to FOMO buy, like, oh, I need the latest and greatest. And it's kind of weird. You're sitting here waiting and NVIDIA is getting ready to announce the 40 series when the large sector of their air quote customer base, we can't get a hold of the 30 series. Yeah. <laughs> and then you exactly. Get- Intel, Intel is allegedly releasing a GPU. They, Intel, come on. Intel had an update yesterday, Jill. Yeah. About their uh, discrete and GPUs. And they say, it will be available after summer. Mm-hmm. What's that mean? And, yeah, I know. what <laughs> Summer next year, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> I, st- Intel. <laughs> Intel, quit being Intel. <laughs> just, just for like 10 minutes. Put a date yeah, on it. I know. I mean, and, and they, they're. I, I, I read about how the, the Intel Arc, the first gen ones, are going to be, kind of slow, yeah. <laughs> compared to the AMD and the GTX cards. So that they was a little that. disappointing, but. <laughs> I didn't expect them to be fire breathers, but I mean, we're probably yeah. going to see like it, they're targeting towards low and like thirty seventy type performance, maybe on their high end, but yeah. True. Even yesterday, mm-hmm. NVIDIA announced, uh, not NVIDIA, AMD re- announced a refresh of the... Uh, yeah, the XT- 6000 series. Yeah, like the yeah. 6500 XT YOLO Swag Edition or whatever. Yeah. Same hardware, just clocked higher and a bit more expensive. So Yeah, yeah. I noticed that because I'm looking into getting a 6800 and 6900. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, those ca- those cards, it's just, to me, it didn't seem seem worth it if you have a have a, a 6000 to go to the 6050 was right. not that you know big a difference and if you were doing any type of streaming 
here's the thing. In 65.50. That 65 was it. 50? 50. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you are doing any type of streaming, wait. Because it, NVIDIA shouldn't be your next purchase. It is going to be AMD because AMD confirmed. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that on uh, Linux Teamcast Weekly. Go watch Saturday's yeah. show. Is going to have AV1 encoding along with Intel. Woohoo! That's yes. the new hotness for streaming. That will be the new hotness for streaming. Listen to Old Man Vin just one time. Just yeah. once. <laughs> just once. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> All right. Uh, Deb. Yeah. Get. So this is this is something really Don't cool. Don't you mean so... get? No, Deb what? get. Oh. So the the wonderful and amazing Martin Wimpress, who's who's been known to play Trackmania with us. He's the former Ubuntu desktop lead and, and lead of Ubuntu Mate has created an awesome new tool. It's called DebGet, which is apt get for third-party Ubuntu software. It lets you install .deb installers from third-party repos and PPAs, as well as websites from GitHub and many more, and all from the command line. It, it works so good, too. And it you know, has the ease of use of our beloved apt-get command line package manager. And like regular apt, debget is able to handle installing any, any dependencies required by the software to run, as long as those dependencies are, of course, in the Ubuntu repos. But it also can handle updates, upgrades, removals, cleaning, searching, and even purges. Yes, purges. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> and once you install it, it is easy as run deb, deb get list to see the software available to install using it, then install software by running sudo deb get and the name of the application. And there is, oh boy, there was Discord on there. There's Element. There, even Lutris is on there from our very own uh, Matthew Commandon from Strider here in chat. <laughs> There's Docker in there, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, Dropbox, lots of great tools um, mm. that are normally installed from third-party repos, like Google Chrome. That's Heroic Games nice Launcher is on there. Yeah, it is. Mailspring. Oh, Microsoft Edge. I can... No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Opera, Plex, Jellyfin. PowerShell, uh, yeah. Raspberry Pi Imager. Okay, Skeep Quick Cam is on there. Quick cameo, yeah. Sync thing. Lutris, so there's... Google Earth Pro. I didn't even know. I guess that's the thing. I don't clear. Yeah, I haven't played around with Google Earth in a while. But Man, we were simple there. creatures back in the day. Look, it's a 3D yeah. globe we can spin around. Oh, my, it's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of neat. If you are on, on the Ubuntu's and you want to try this, a little sad that you can't do a you know, app to get me a sandwich. <laughs> yes. <It's> quite unfortunate. <laughs> Maybe you can though. Maybe maybe there maybe that's a little something you can that's sneak in. Gotta, there. You gotta tell Wimpy about that. It's gonna be a, a new <laughs> meme. <laughs> Deb get me a sandwich. And it better not do anything until I say pseudo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Having some extra repositories and things like that. I mean, I get it. Um you know, because repositories exist. They're not going to go away despite, you know, everyone wants like this. I shouldn't say everyone. Every distribution wants their own version of this mythical centralized repo yeah. of like microsoft mm -hmm. windows store it's not gonna happen i was always uh one thing i will always say about ubuntu is the ppa system not perfect but man it worked like yes absolutely and this is wow you can deb get it now <laughs> i would uh makes ppas even easier to to, to use well <laughs> ppas were absolutely an imperfect solution especially anybody who had a bunch of ppas and were you know upgrading yeah when you upgrade yeah, you gotta like, go through ah, which ones do i take like out? the yeah. nvidia drivers <laughs> yeah. things like that so yeah i mean there's always a better solution go try <laughs> this it's priced to sell absolutely free open source and uh yeah good work wimpy mm -hmm. good yay work. wimpy we love you <laughs> now something i never thought i'd see never thought in a million years yeah not, absolutely <laughs> not even nine hundred ninety nine thousand years no KDE. Love some KDE. Mm -hmm. But a lot more people like KDE Connect. Because you start talking about um, KDE. And yes. Even people on Gnome, even people on XFCE. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I use KDE Connect. And that is one thing that I absolutely use. And there's been you know multiple Android apps, desktop apps, and stuff like that. 
This is the unusual thing. This is KDE Connect on the iStore for your iDevice, officially from KDE. Wow. There it is. <laughs> and kind of shocking. I never thought I'd see that. And this isn't from like, you know, Gary's wacky KDE shock. No, this is yeah. straight from KDE itself. And it is there. It does require iOS 14 or later, but it's not too bad. Doesn't collect any data into NTLS encryption. Okay. I'm down for this. I don't use KDE Connect though, Jill. So also I don't have yeah. an iDevice. Yeah. Yeah, me, me neither. I use GS Connect uh, for Android, mm. which is just like a KDE Connect. Um, but it, it'll work on, you know, all the things as well, all the different desktop managers, like and, uh, KDE Connect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's KDE Connect. You know, if you want to, like, copy yeah. like, clipboards and stuff around, send photos, files, slideshows, uh, you can run commands, do remote input. I mean, a bunch Get of cool stuff. all those notifications. Right. <laughs> i'm so down for that and yeah like if you have like your wall to garden i device and there it is you don't have to do anything funky it's just right there in the app store which i think is awesome just make sure you keep that updated every two years or they'll delist it because apple cares about ah yes absolutely yeah (laughs) good advice man (laughs) (laughs) that's just like a weird thing i understand why they're doing it it's not as malicious as people want it to believe (laughs) <laughs> want to believe it's, it's just to like get out and make sure all the software is updated mm-hmm. you know yeah <laughs> i get it people aren't happy with it and i understand the logic behind that too it's one of those things like i can see both sides i know that's a strange thing in modern times but it is possible if you put your mind to it everyone something i'd love <laughs> you to put your mind to it and i'm very thankful along with jill Yay. for everyone who has and currently puts their mind to our patron over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we finance all the little things we do on this network. Try to do some educational material. Try to do some comedy. Try to make people laugh on Saturday nights. At least confuse them. And, <laughs> yes. Um, we get general <laughs> stuff that we do here. And um, I have a bunch of series that I do on YouTube. Trying to bring Linux to people who kind of know how to Linux, but they want to do something a little cooler than just your basic stuff. And that, that's why yeah. my interest has always fallen. We do live streams Tuesdays and Fridays. Me and Jill are racing against each other with um, all of our Twitch Crack subs, Mania. all of our patrons that want to hop in. Yeah, uh, everyone's finally clicked in. They're like, this is a physics yeah, this is a physics puzzle with wheels. And there's 14 yes. new physics puzzles each and every week. <laughs> and we try to slide our way through it. We play, you know, just kind of do a warm up on Tuesday, find the maps, find the bugs and on Friday, we go to town for chances to win documentaries and free games. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Jordan streams on Thursdays. I could, yeah. it's Jordan's jamborees, whatever he comes up with, because that's one thing. We might be doing this for 10 years, but there's no hierarchy. There's no paperwork. I don't, Jordan doesn't have to submit approval. I'm like, I'm planning on streaming this, and I have no <laughs> idea. I'm like, whatever, <laughs> go for it. Joe wants to do something. I'm like, fine, rock on, because <laughs> that's how I like to do things. And hopefully, you enjoy that, but if you do, spare us four quarters a week. Get access to our Discord. Yeah. You get the full length of this show. You're only getting the middle part. No matter where you're listening to it, there's a beginning and an end. It's usually about an hour and a half, two hours, and that is produced in audio and video and a custom RSS feed that you get mm-hmm. by becoming a patron. Twitch subs, thanks each and every one of you. That also gets you access to our Discord, but Joe, we get a new patron. Yeah, we do. And his name is Tom. Thank you, Tom, so much. I hope to see you in chat if you haven't. You may have already been in there. I think it might be one of our new people I noticed in, in chat. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, we but we're not new sure. People. That's always yeah. <laughs> it, the past couple of weeks, people coming in. Yeah. Again, I can't get over the, uh, like, wait a minute. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty dope, isn't it? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it is. We have a very, very eclectic, cool, down-to-earth awesome. um completely insane uh discord chat yes. but we also have irc um yes we do <laughs> since day one that is there and if you're watching live our irc is tied into our discord and our twitch chat in the live channel so you can type from any of those places and you'll show up right here on screen there we go commercials mm-hmm. uh we got amazon wish list if yeah. you want to like buy us toys and trinkets i'm sure jill <laughs> has something that 
is blinky and or covered in fuzz. Yes. <laughs> like what's behind me? Yes, lots of penguins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a bunch of boring stuff for the studio, uh, but that'll get you up on the wall if that's your jam. I don't know. I, uh, that's a threat. I, that's why I put yeah. that in. I don't want anybody like, no. You know, it's like, well, you got to give me something else. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, yes. And Jordan has exercise equipment on his. Right. Pedro has a lot of check on his. Yeah. Pedro just, Pedro just wants to thieve. <laughs> that's all he does in the evenings. He just breaks into places, probably his own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we got a merch store and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. Have we have we done the shilling and the plugging sufficiently? Yes, we have. All right. All right. I don't <laughs> now know. Now we're I'm ready for making pies. sure I feel sufficiently dirty. I'm like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> Maybe not. Let's talk about some LED pies. Oh my gosh! Yeah, Christmas bulb LED <laughs> Christmas bulb pies. But I don't think those are LEDs. Those look like gummies. They're, like they're on a pie. I mean, if I put real yeah. LEDs on the pie, people would get angry at me. Yeah, but they're, yeah, I think they're just like, or, or they're, they're just like fondant, uh, <laughs> fondant uh, colored bulbs. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure they're just bread and people. Somebody yeah. Because <laughs> <bulb. laughs> so that's like, a cool looking pie. <laughs> putting actual bulbs in there. That's some Vinstone level malicious stuff right there. Right? Yeah. Don't. Bad idea. But it makes sense for our next segment. <laughs> it does. We've seen it before and we're going to see it again. I'm talking about a matrix display for your Raspberry Pi. What sets this one apart, Vin? What's a matrix display for your Raspberry yeah, Pi? Yeah, so Nothing cool. more. Nothing more to it. I'm just kidding. Here's, here's some dopeness. Check this out. First off, that looks cool. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily the matrix display. It's how it's sitting. It's how it's hanging out. This is a... Very comprehensive dashboard uh, for 64 by 32 matrix. Programmed the dashboard, uh, what was it on Python conjunction with Helzer RGB matrix library? That's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. But it's the uh, case and the stand on this. Yeah. This is what beautiful. I want to get to. Where, look at this. Oh, now how much would you pay? Nothing. It's completely open source. You can build it yourself. You can 3D print it. That's right. The code in CAD on the GitHub. Mm -hmm. I want this. Now, he's doing this with a Raspberry Pi B. You could probably get away with a Pico, but you might not be able to run some of the heavier stuff. As yeah, long as this thing can display HTOP, yeah. <laughs> You're happy. <laughs> I, I'm down because I want yeah. something like this. I I've uh, I just want that. Look at this. That is so cool. That's so slick. Like, <laughs> now, Vin, you know what I'm thinking of? I would... I, I am seriously thinking of doing this project. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is, is I've always wanted a, a matrix LED display. I've never had one. And I check the prices and they're between 30 and $50, depending on who you get them from. Yeah. But I wanted to use one with a Raspberry Pi as a case mod in my case with a, you know, a glass panel. So I think that would look cool. And then you could put a video on it or a decoration on it. Oh, so yeah. it we looks could put cool like inside. Windows 11 is starting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and I've always wanted one of these. It just stays on <laughs> yeah. that. You're like, yeah. <sighs> and that one's sweet looking. It's slick looking, isn't yeah. it? And I was like, hmm, that doesn't look too bad. I wouldn't. <laughs> it, it's good enough looking to where I'm not a fan of things that don't do anything. But yeah. that's slick enough looking. Like that serves no practical purpose, but aesthetics. I'm like, well, my brain put H top on it. Yeah, then we can look yeah. at it. Yeah, right. And <laughs> horizontal or the weather or yeah. pictures or, or whatever you want, videos. You can flip <laughs> it. Like if you have even if you had to send the uh CAD files off to a 3D print shop to get that back, mm -hmm. that'd be still be worthwhile doing. Thirty to fifty bucks for the display, done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great weekend project. I yeah. wouldn't mind doing that. Um, it really is. And low power too. Yeah, low power and Speaking of uh, 2001, my husband has been bringing that up a lot. That looks like the, <laughs> like the obelisk, the monolith from 2001 <laughs> with the screen on it. <laughs> That's what it kind of looks like. That's so old. You're supposed to use the, the Radio Shack Q-Cats for yeah. space. To, uh, <laughs> what was it? The Expanse. I was watching The Expanse. Oh, and they had a, yeah. Uh, they had a 3D mouse used as like the spaceship 
main control. I'm like, yeah, come on. That's right. Yeah. No, it was a space mouse. I mean, fittingly <laughs> enough, they were called space mouse. But it's like, I know what that is. You run into that a lot, especially in sci-fi. You know, prop departments got to do what they got to do. Average person's mm-hmm. not going to notice stuff like that. And like, I know what that is. But hey, there it is. Oh, man, Steve's <laughs> posting a picture of a something in her Discord. Yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's a neat clock. That's one of those pseudo clock, clocks. It is 15 minutes past. <laughs> Instead of saying the, the time directly, it's, it's one of those, uh, you know, it's a half hour till 2 p.m. or 15 Steve, minutes Steve, somebody till. from Switzerland is going to come kick you in the shins just for having that. <laughs> That's an affront to all things yeah. timely. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful people. We got to get out of here. Thanks for hanging around. Show was yeah, all along this week. Fun. We had a lot to test and a lot to talk about. Yeah, we'll see you we again did. next week. You can always leave us an email, drop us a comment on the YouTube video, and uh, it might end up on this show. That's a fair warning. Again, everything's a warning. How about let's roll up some credits and roll out of here. Awesome. Aw, thank Allegedly. you. Allegedly. Again, to all our wonderful patrons. We've got in chat right now, we've got Gamatron. We have my Steve husband. We have Inertia. We have Justin and all these beautiful people who, who donate to us and support our shows and our, our pseudo network. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to knock that network out one day. <laughs> yeah. Inertia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Right. All our beautiful patrons. Jellybean. Jellybean. My brother. <laughs> Speaking of helicopters flying over my house. Oh boy. I'm not even kidding, man. You're not, not even, even kidding. kidding. Yeah, sometimes the Coast Guard flies over mine during the show. That's happened before. If the Coast Guard flies over my house, they're decidedly lost. Lost. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I live on the coast ish. I'm coast of yeah. Jason. I can drive to the coast in an hour <laughs> or two, but yeah. <laughs> Bye everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye everyone. Love you all.